Good morning, everyone. It's day 56 of my 60 pounds and 90 days weight loss challenge. And today, I want to tell you how you can tell if you're fat adapted. So there's a lot of people that have been commenting and asking how to tell when they're fat adapted. Well, there's a few symptoms that I like to use to tell when I'm fat adapted, but really it's kind of a gray area because the definition of fat adapted is a little bit gray uh, area itself. So when I feel like I'm fat adapted, I no longer have the cravings for sugary uh, drinks or sugary food. I have increased energy because if you've already transitioned into keto, you know that for a while you have low energy. You don't really feel like doing any exercise, even if you're used to exercising. Um, you're just really kind of cranky because you want that sugar. You're still depleting the glycogen. Um, and I would also say that there are levels of fat adaptation and you can reach new levels uh, as time goes by when you're on a ketogenic diet. Um, so I would say that the symptoms of being fat adapted are that you have increased energy, you have uh, a greater satiating uh, effect from the food that you do eat, especially from fat. You'll notice that if you do have like a bulletproof coffee with some butter in it, coconut oil, MCT oil, something like that, that you'll literally get a rush because your body is so good at processing that fat. Um, you'll also see a decreased need for sleep a lot of times. Uh, I wake up and I go, man, I really wanted to get more sleep than that but I can't go back to sleep. Uh, so I'll wind up only getting six, seven hours, even if I have, uh, even if I have time to get eight or nine hours and I'm tired because there are some nights during my week that because of my schedule, uh, I only get three to four hours sleep. So I try to make up for that on days when I have time to do so. And, uh, especially after six or eight weeks on keto, uh, and it's starting to happen to me right now. Even though I have the time available to sleep longer and make up for those short nights that I get, it just doesn't happen. So I'll sleep three hours one night, I'll sleep three hours the next night, and then the next night I have time to sleep 10 or 11 hours and I want to make up for it, and I can only sleep seven hours. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating at first, but then when you realize that you really just don't need the sleep, uh, it starts to become mentally more relaxing. So when you wake up after seven hours and you don't uh, really feel the need for extra sleep, you think you need it because you're used to needing it. But then when you go throughout your day, you realize, wow, I really didn't need it. So it's not, it, don't stress out about it. Don't let it give you anxiety if you're not getting any sleep. It just means that you're becoming fat adapted. Another thing that happens uh, to some people when they become fat adapted is that if they've got those strips, that I use all the time and I'll, I've been doing this for a long time uh, on and off. Most of the time when I'm doing keto, I'm months on it without getting off of it. Um, I've been doing it now for over 60 days because I started my keto even before I started uh, the video, I think. Maybe it, was, maybe it was right when I did the video. So it might be 56 days right now. And uh, I still register ketones on the strips, but there's some people that claim that after they become completely fat adapted, they don't even register ketones on those strips. And I would say that the reason that is happening is because they're so good at using the ketones that their body produces that they're not wasting them by expelling them through their urine. Um, also, another thing that happens if your body has become fat adapted, in my opinion, is that it has learned very well how to utilize fat and how to convert your fat to ketones and how to convert exogenous fat to ketones. And so even if you do get out of ketosis, it's very easy to get back in it. I will tell you, I've probably gone in and out of ketosis at least 10 times, uh, probably more over the last two years. And each time it has become easier for me to get into ketosis. I really do believe that your liver converting your fat into ketones and your body running off of that beta hydroxybutyrate instead of off of glycogen, I really think it's like a muscle that you can exercise. So the longer that you do it, 
the better off you're going to be if you get out of ketosis. Because when you get when you go to get back in, I don't really have keto flu when I transition to uh, ketone burning instead of sugar burning. I don't really get down on myself for long. There's typically like one day where I'm not uh, feeling it, right? Where I don't have the energy and everything. And I feel like that's the exact transition period is that one day. And I will register ketones after three days, even if my body is completely filled with glycogen beforehand. Uh, so rest assured that every time you get knocked out of ketosis, it will not be as hard to get back in. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you want to get out of ketosis on a regular basis. So soon I'm going to do a video about whether or not we should be carb refeeding and if so, how often. Please like and subscribe so that you can catch that video and all of the rest that I do. I'm going to put my way in now at the end of this video and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. 258.8